favorite day of the week. As you'll see, this is not Rich. Uh, hey Joe is a special guest today because he is, uh, Rich is out sick. So we are going to do some cool stuff, recapping the frag. We've yep. got a uh, guest appearance. We're going to talk and answer questions. So yep. make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff, YouTube and Facebook. Keenan, let's roll an intro. All right, welcome back. Awesome intro as always. So we just wrapped up the FRAG series. It was a 10-week build we did. Um, everything was stocked by Worldwide Corals. Yep. And at the end of it, we gave away a FRAG 105.4 with Radions, which is amazing. That's awesome. Um, so that was last week. And we are actually bringing on the winner of that contest for the United States. And we're going to have him come in, tell us a little bit about his water rocks following, what he's going to do with the tank. So let's welcome on in. Hey, hey, welcome! Hello. <laughs> it's your big debut. So last week you won the Frag 105 giveaway that we did at the end of the series. How right, excited? Right. Were you surprised? Excited? Were you watching when it happened live? Unfortunately, I wasn't watching live. We were having Hurricane Laura was coming through, so I was watching. Oh yeah, that. that's true. <laughs> uh, so, so later that night I was rewatching it, and and I was blown away. And then I decided that there had to be twenty thousand Michael Hardens out there. And it was <laughs> Uh, it, it was a long night. I didn't sleep at all. I was very excited. That is awesome. awesome. We're really excited for you to have it. Um, and, you know, what's been kind of like your experience with tanks so far? Like, what made you start following Waterbox? Like, how did it all begin for you? Um, I've been keeping aquariums since I was about 16, so I guess that puts me close to 30 years. Um, I kind of have a dual life with aquariums, one with my work and one with personal. And... Uh, Honestly, about 12 years ago when Hurricane Gustav came through, I wiped out my, uh, my favorite reef that I had then, and I kind of stepped away from it. Uh, so I, I've, I've been on in the periphery of it, doing some things with work and keeping things there. But uh, got the itch a couple of months back. You know that itch you get. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the tank. It's a very expensive itch. And I, I started following you guys, started looking for, for what I wanted in a tank, and, and came across Waterbox and was blown away by the product. Started watching videos, and uh, I guess... <laughs> entered the drawing with no idea anything would come of it. That's Here awesome. I am. So your work actually has to do with tanks and kind of tied to this. You are a marine biologist. Correct. That's Correct. pretty cool. That's, um, that's one of those dream jobs that everyone wants to always have. Yeah. This is part of their life. <laughs> um, so it's really awesome. I'm sure you can do some pretty cool stuff with this new frag whenever you get it. Well, I, I will I will be upfront about that. I've made mistakes with, with my own tanks. Uh, I'm going to do just a, a straight reef. I'm not going to try to import anything from local waters like I did once and uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, wipe no, everything out. You're going to keep it I, simple, kind of find, uh, kind of follow the guideline like yeah. we did with the build? Step by step, I've been going back over the uh, videos and taking notes, and uh, I'm going to set it up basically the same way you guys did. I love what you've done. It looks fantastic. It's clean. Uh, and I love organization and clean setup. So that is awesome. We are super excited Can't to wait. see this like come to life. Um, your frag is shipping to you shortly, and hopefully you are in our group, our user group on Facebook, and you will keep everyone updated on the progress of the frag um, as you get more livestock in it. Yep. Like we always want to see these tanks come to life, yep. especially as a series winner. Um, you know, hopefully we will see this grow along with you, and we're super super excited for you. Well, I can't thank you all enough. Thank you so much. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this, and I will share updates, I promise. It may, may be a little time. Okay. But, uh, once they start coming, they're going to come right. One picture at a time. One picture at a time. One coral at a time. Right. All of that. So thank you so much, Michael. We're super excited for you, and thank you for joining us on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. Y'all take care. Thank you. You too. Awesome. So that's Michael. He is the winner of the series that we wrapped up last week of the Frag 105. And if you have been watching the series, you know that this is Joe. What's going on, and guys? And he has been the one who has guided us towards our selection in the coral and the fish. We went down to Worldwide Corals, visited the coral farm, yep. picked out your fish, all that good stuff. And he is the reason for the beauty of what has become yep. the Frag um, tank. 
So um, we want to bring him on. We're going to do kind of like a question Q&A type of series. Ask your questions, drop them in. We're going to just try and catch as much of them as possible. Yep. Talk fish, talk corals, whatever questions you guys want to know. We're here to kind of answer. We want to have like a little happy hour. That's right. We've got margaritas going. Cheers. Cheers. Boop. And, you know, join us, ask questions, all that good stuff. We are going to just kind of hang out. But first, let's see how the frag has been doing. All the corals have been mounted up on the rock. It is looking Pretty phenomenal, yeah. I, I've got to say. So yeah. we just have a little check out on some of the corals today. You can definitely comment on, you know, any particular ones. We just did a kind of a check in on each of them, awesome. but everything looks so happy, yeah. so beautiful and colorful. We have a lot of variety in there. Like here, you got a hammer. We've got the zoos, bower bankies, beautiful yep. chalice, chalice here, and finally yep, everything's else. in place. Yep. And it's just open and happy. Blastos, thank you. That's oh, yeah. like my favorite. I, I was those. so excited when those <laughs> came out. Um, the Bower Bankies look great on the bottom rock. Yes. And uh, Jess Stewart, who requested the Bower Banky Island, oh, yeah. um, was very happy to have a designated area just for all for her. Of her. Yep. Yes. So you'll see, I mean, these corals are absolutely beautiful and they all come from you. Look, I mean, I don't know, I'm pretty much in love with the tank. It's it looks awesome. Really, really good. The scape, the corals, the fish, everything. Um, was like the perfect combination. So you see a nice recap of everything. Yep, that's what we like to see. So you had, I'd say you probably had a lot to do with most of these corals that got sent our way. Yeah, yes. yeah we packed them all up and uh, they came on over. We handpicked the first batch with you guys and then the second was kind of our pick. We mm -hmm. did the coral club, we did the mixed frag pack, and then we did uh, kind of just a variety pack that we put together and it filled out the tank really good. Well, kind of like for something like this where you're like not physically at the tank, the customer's not in your store, like how do you kind of decide what is a good selection? Yeah, we request, you know, notes when you put together your order on our site for what you're looking for. So, you know, if you already have a lot of certain coral, we make sure we can steer clear of that and maybe find you some new corals that you don't have yet. Okay. So we've got a variety, color, yeah. you know, all of that. So um, we're very excited. Can't wait to see as everything grows in because yep. they've got a long way to go, but it's going to be it's absolutely stunning for sure. So we are, like I said, we are here to answer questions. Um, my iPad died, Keenan, so uh, um, you can keep a look on Facebook. I'm going to try and scroll through on here as well. Joe's kind of looking at YouTube, so we're going to try and grab questions as we can. Keenan's going to interject with his as he sees them, but I got no battery over here, so. We can start it off with... Um I'm not going to say the name. How soon after adding fish <laughs> should I add a cleanup crew? I usually do a cleanup crew first. Yep. So your tank is cycled, everything's tested, you add your like snails and crabs, you give it another week or so, if everything tastes good, add your first fish. Yep. Agree? Agreed. That's about the way to do it yep. because they're going to less bio load than a fish. Fish are feeding every day, they're making more waste, so it's going to be more of a stressor on your biological. So you want to kind of go from, you know, baby steps in that direction. So yep. I'd say inverts, fish, inverts first. coral. Yep. So there's for that one here. Okay. Uh, question from Kalito Reef. What corals do you recommend for a beginner? Soft corals. So yep. stick with all your easy ones. Um, I mean, you've got anything soft coral, so that means there's no hard skeleton at all. It's all flash, zoos, leathers. Recordia, mushrooms. Yeah. Yep. Keep with the zoas, all the softy leathers, all that stuff does good. And, and we then, have that separated on the site. So if you're looking for just a beginner pack, you can start just with that. Nice. Yeah. And you'll see like, I mean, I kind of general rules I always tell people is they're like so confused. Oh my God. So soft corals and LPS and SPS. And like, I always kind of say, and it's not an exact science, but you know, the less hard skeleton it has, yep. the easier it is. Yep. So the Especially more of a tanks. hard skeleton, um, stony type of coral is the more difficult, whereas if it has no skeleton, it's going to be easiest. And then LPS is right in the middle where it's got a skeleton, but it's also fleshy. Yep. So amount of your hard ex you know, skeleton of the coral is going to mean it's harder to keep. So yep. so LPS like this, they've got a skeleton, but it's nice and fleshy. And then your zoos and leathers have no skeleton. They generally be the most forgiving, fastest growing, oh, yeah. all of that stuff. So It's a good place to start. Let's see. All right, I have one. I have a super picky eater, a Bangai Carnal. Any tips what to feed him? So being that it's such a small fish, brine shrimp and mysis shrimp is probably your best bet to start with. And then, you know, as the tank, you know, as the fish gets used to the tank, you'll probably be able to accept pellets. 
But definitely start with frozen food. Best for pick, uh, finicky eaters. Yeah, I mean, pellet food, I think, I mean, frozen food probably the easiest to introduce all fish to. Yep. And if you can stay on it, I feel like it's probably the best diet overall. Oh, yeah. Um, but a lot of times new fish are not going to go towards the pellet. It's not very right. natural. Yep. Something a little bit more natural looking like the mysis or the brine. Um, and there's a lot of food out there that's just a mixture of frozen stuff yeah. that's going to be good. Once they see the other fish react and start eating it, they usually come around. Yeah. So don't start with pellets. Yes. Okay. Steve Swire from Facebook is asking, my tank is full of algae at the moment. Did you guys dose vibrant or something to keep the tank so clean? No, I nope. mean, what we did is we really just have kept on top of general maintenance. We added a few snails and crabs. We also have our light schedule where in the very beginning, before there was much coral in there, we didn't have it high intensity ramped up all day because you don't need it. Um, you know, so we've kept their schedule to be less as, you know, or almost barely on when it was just fish and yeah. inverts. Ramp it up slowly as you add corals. And now it's on more full spectrum. Um, and then just really keeping our filter socks clean, running media, we've done some water changes, and not overfeeding yep. is going to be pretty key. But yep. if you've got algae, what would you... Cut back the lights, you know, check your schedule. That's usually the first place to start, especially all the high output LEDs. You're going to grow a lot of algae if you have the wrong schedule mm -hmm. or if it's running all night. Um, and then the same, go back to your uh, water chemistry, check those nitrates, phosphates. See, you know, that's a good place to start too. Mm -hmm. And uh, media, you know, make sure you don't have old media just sitting in the sump or anything like that. Just, re you know, rebuilding nutrients back into the tank. Yeah, I feel like overfeeding is probably one of the biggest issues that people do is because, and I think we've talked about this a lot of shows, is like the fish always look hungry and they're always yeah. in a bag and they're like, yeah. oh my God, please feed me. And they eat and eat and eat. Um, but all that food going in just comes out as waste product and that's going to cause your tank to be dirtier. So, you know, feed just enough for the fish they're not really doing much they're yeah. just kind of hanging out um you know so feed sparingly it's going to keep your nutrients down because i think this number one spot people's nutrients come from is just overfeeding yeah so take it easy on the feeding your tanks are going to be a lot cleaner i got another one this one's from koi boy six <clears throat> still learning but if i went into worldwide corals with a picture light info and flow areas could the store help me by finding corals that fit each area within my beginner range and where would I fill later? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the more photos, the better. That kind of gives always helps us figure out, you know, what corals you can get and how big of the tank is to put everything inside. So yeah, step by step, you know, come on in. We'll, we'll show you what you should start with and build from there and get you a full reef. Awesome. And yeah, I mean, any of your stores, they should be able to guide you, you know, and help you in that direction. Yep. Because um, every spot on the rock is a little bit different. Of like, course. So I was placing the corals, finally glued them all down in the frag. And you had to really, you know, really particularly think about, okay, this one's going to grow more in a dish shape. Of course. This one's going to grow taller. This one's going to grow in a crust along the rock, but possibly sting. So you have to yep. really, really smart. And then we've got MP40s on the side, so they're going to change up the flow. Yep. You know, can't have something low flow and direct path to them. Um, so it is definitely a lot to consider when you place your corals where they're going to be the happiest. And this is also why I don't glue them down as soon as they come in. Right. I want to say, okay, they like the spot, maybe not move them here. Yeah. And see where they're kind of happiest in the tank because lighting, flow, everything is so different from every single... I mean, you can have the same exact setup. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be different. Still be different, yep. So, you know, gauge them, pick based upon their flow and lighting needs and kind of see how they are around the tank and where they're happiest. Yeah. So... Let's see. So Sean Patterson says, "Hey Jess, other than the mi other than what the Mini 25 comes with, what other media would you put in the middle chamber?" Um, so like our cubes and our peninsula minis, they come with some filter sponges, some bio media, and carbon. Um, you know, the carbon's good. You're gonna end up changing that out after the first month or two. The filter sponges just keep them clean. Yep. But for media, I mean, you there's carbon, there's phosphate remover. You've got a couple all-in-ones that kind of combine them all together. Yeah. There's uh, like uh, Kimmy Pure. There's Max Out. There's quite a few yeah. that put it all into one bag. Um, and some people will put a small skimmer in that middle chamber too, just to help with yeah, some nutrient export. But the, usually the biomedia is what people will not use is because if you're doing like a reef with live rock, right. you don't need that in there because your live rock is becoming the biological media. Yeah. And on such a small tank, you don't want to change anything too fast. Yeah. So just let your rock be your biological your rock and sand access that. Yep. Use that middle chamber for either protein skimmer or like your uh, chemical filtration, which is going to be your carbon phosphate remover, that yep. kind of stuff. So 
Um, and there's a pretty good amount of room in there, so you can do both of those, really, skimmer yeah. and all of that stuff. I know you guys have some of the peninsulas and cubes at your shop, and there's oh, yeah. a good amount of space. Yeah. You guys are actually doing a, a cube 10 like show, showdown, yeah. right? Yeah, we're doing the battle. We, yep, we got uh, 12 cube 10 set up around the office and the store and the farm. And it's, uh, yeah, each group of employees is taking on the best for the rest. Nice. So follow that. That's going to be fun. How long are you guys doing that for? It'll end. It's a year long, so it'll end oh next God. March. Yep. And you can follow it on uh, Reef to Reef. We have all the pictures of all the t uh, contest tanks. So it's like truly showing like the long-term care, growth, and use of each person's tank. Yep. How they do it, how it evolves. It's kind of cool something yeah. to see. You know, we put ours into like a 10-week snapshot, but this is giving like that full yeah. thing. Yeah. Along the lines of that, uh, the cube, uh, Granny Reefer is asking, what's the best food for corals in a 10 gallon setup with about 15 mixed frags? So you would want to use a really small amount, but any of the you know powdered coral foods do really well. You know, we like to use the reef roids at Worldwide mm -hmm. Corals. Some people have used the other, uh, you know, the, the reef chilies and other powders like that, but really just that, just a little bit of that, and then mostly just your fish food, you know. Just do a little bit of that, and all the corals are mostly photosynthetic, so yeah. you don't need to really supplement feed too much. If you do, probably better off just doing like a amino acids. Yeah, because you figure the the light and the fish waste equals a lot of what the corals are going to take up. Yep. So you don't have to add a bunch, especially in a small tank. You're yeah, going to ask for algae problems and nutrient. Um, you know, so base it off of now. If you had a tank with no fish in it, you would want to feed your corals more. Yeah. Um, but in general, they're going to get a lot of it. It's a little bit of supplement feeding here with a powder or liquid type of food. Um, you said amino acids are good, yeah. especially for the tissue growth of like soft corals and stuff like that. Oh, but yeah. just don't go over crazy yep, with it because then slow. you're going to have to be in a algae farm and no one ever yep, wants down. that at all. <laughs> yeah, don't go there. Let's see. Trying to keep up on Facebook here. We have a lot of people with us. Oh, we do have, um, we're going to give away some shirts because we are making sure every episode we have something that we are giving away. So today we have some Waterbox Aquarium shirts. Free swag. Uh, yeah, free swag. These are super comfy, like tri blend, awesome shirts. So we're going to announce on our Facebook for our first person. First person on the shirt for that is we have Alan Wills for oh, a yeah. shirt on Facebook. Congratulations. Nice. Got it. Just kind of randomly throwing that in there. Um, email support at waterboxaquariums.com and get uh, customer service or information. They'll get you a shirt out. And we will pull someone on YouTube in a little bit. So stay tuned on that one. And like I said, we are here, um, you know, for all kinds of questions. Or I don't know if you have anything you can keep up over there that's anything good. Yeah, we've got, there's a couple of good ones here. Uh, what skimmer would you recommend for the Peninsula Mini? Um, I've seen quite a few, like this is a good place to go to our Facebook user group, um, our official user group on Facebook, and between cubes and the peninsulas, the people have recommended a lot of different ones. One I name I see come up pretty often is Tunzi. Yeah. Like the 9001 I think is very popular for the smaller aquariums because it has a really streamlined um, footprint. I know there's other ones, but go in there, you can use a search, you can just look up skimmers. Um, or just ask the question. There's a yeah, ton of people that have used a lot of different ones. There's a lot of peninsulas out there now. Um, so you'll find quite a few varieties that you can use on that one. But I can't, like, we don't particularly use a skimmer on our small tanks here. So I can't really yeah. say, like, here, I mean, I think on we've done a build or two, and I think it ended up being a Tunzi yeah. 9001. It's a good just one. Just because it's slim. Yep. Um, but as a general rule, we don't use them too much on the small tanks. And then we got another one. What should I do if I have an ammonia spike? Do I just keep doing a 10% water change until it's back to zero? I'm going to give you this one. Yeah. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> I mean, you know, how old is the tank would probably be the best bet. You know, if it's a new tank, you kind of want to let it, if there's no livestock, let it, you know, break down on its own. It's, it's probably just going through the nitrogen cycle. But, yeah, if it's an up and running current tank and you're seeing a spike, uh, definitely want to do, you know, act fast and do a water change and then, you know, probably wait 12 hours and uh, retest and see how it goes. But 10% water change should be good for that. Yeah, get those levels. If you don't have livestock in there, let it run out. Yep. But if you do, you know, those water changes, add a bacterial supplement, cut back that feeding, you know, figure out what the cause yep. of that is. Figure out where it's is. coming from. Um, another reason you want to, when you start going your tank, is like, go slow. Yep. Small steps. Because if you have an ammonia spike in a, an established aquarium, something has gone Something's very wrong. wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, you definitely look into what the cause is it, correct that, or, you know, it's going to be a longer term yeah. issue. So. 
Ammonia never good in an established tank. And a new tank completely expected for sure. Let's see here. Okay, everyone says congrats to Alan for winning his shirt. Um, hey Jess, I have a couple of people saying nice hair. People are realizing your hair color. Oh, you yes, nice. okay. So, um, yeah, it's kind of up because it's really humid and storming today. But I chopped off like a lot of hair this weekend um, and went, I got my roots all taken care of. So, thank you. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Glad everyone likes it. Uh, I haven't been this short in a long time, so it's uh, been an adjustment, but I love it. So, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, here's a question from Selandon Russ. I don't know if that's right, but how long after adding the CUC should I add fish? My tank is just about cycled, and I am excited to start my first reef tank. Yeah, so, you know, if you got the cleanup crew in there, they're doing well. It's probably time to add one or two fish. Um, you know, I'd probably wait about two weeks after the cleanup crew's in there, make sure they thrive, do good. And then, uh, yeah, grab a couple of fish from your store, local store and, uh, you know, quarantine them and see how they do and put them in the tank. Yeah, make sure you always let them know how big your tank is and it's yeah. new. If you walk in there and say, I have a 50 gallon tank, I want to get some fish, yeah. the store could easily sell you 10 fish. Yeah and not know, whereas if it's your first time, you want to look at two or three fish. Yeah. You know, make sure just all the information's out there. Tell Take them it everything you can. Slower. Yeah. Makes it a lot easier for them. And the proper type of fish as well. Correct. So. It's all on you, Keenan. I can't, I can't look at this and. <laughs> I'm mean, gonna throw this one. I'm gonna throw this one out there. I know we weren't. Um, a lot of people are asking about the marine line. Multiple sizes, multiple things. Any news on that? Um, you have to wait and see. Oh, yeah. um, every time someone asks about something new, it's basically just wait and find out. Uh, I feel like we might be dropping some information coming up. Uh oh. Um, so, you know, I've always, like with here at Waterbox, we have so much always in the works that you don't see, you don't really know about. Um, you know, people are always giving suggestions or requests on things they're looking for, and we do listen to those. So we have a lot of stuff that we're always kind of developing and stuff. Um, recently, we did also announce the all-in-one 65.4. So yep, a four-foot all-in-one. Finally. Very popular as yep. far as in demand. Oh, we yeah. have people asking constantly. We had stores asking constantly um, for something bigger, because our biggest one was a three-foot, which yeah. was a 50.3. So we did actually release and is available for pre-order now for the 65.4 all-in-one. Um, and details on a marine are coming. Yeah. You know, and who knows what who else. Knows. So stay tuned. Watch the show every week because that's probably how you're going to find out. That's right. And um, yeah, so just stay tuned. I have no other info. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, K.O. Martinez is asking, what nutrients do you recommend for a NEM only tank? Nutrients? Um, I'm not sure what they mean by nutrients as far as like adding or whatever. Like honestly, in a NEM only, you should just have to feed the NEMs. Yeah, I mean, most of those are going to probably have a couple clownfish, of course, that, you know, they'll keep the anemones fed if they're in there with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a 300-gallon NEM-only tank, and, yeah, we feed the clownfish three times a day, and they, they pretty much supplement the anemones on their own. Yeah, so the anemones are going to feed off the light to some extent. Sure. They're also going to feed off, like, fish waste, and I've actually had quite a few times, and probably how it is there, that the fish actually take fish food yeah. and give it to their anemone uh, yep. so that they take care of it. Um, so a lot of times if that's the scenario, you don't even have to like go and spot feed right. your anemones. Yeah, they do it on their They're own. They're kind of doing it on their own. They're taking their food, feeding their anemone, waste, light, so, it kind of all just works out that yeah. way. But if they're talking about like what your water quality should be with anemones, should be pretty good. Should I mean, be good, but are not a little bit more perfect. sensitive. Right. You know, you still want to have a little bit uh, nitrate and phosphate in there just to keep them rich. You don't want them to, you know, pale out turn all white especially if you're doing like the rose and enemies which are the most popular you know you want to get some nutrients yeah. but don't don't let it be too hefty on like nitrates and right. phosphates and yep. stuff so awesome i'm going to bring this one up because i think it's it's good to call out do you have any stores in the uk or do you ship to the uk we do um so and we actually part of the frag giveaway that we just did with the series that wrapped up is we actually did give a frag 105 away in yeah, the overseas. uh eu uk uh, UK. So check out on our site, waterboxaquariums.co.uk. Dot co dot dot co. UK. Um, Rich usually says this information. <laughs> I don't. And um, you can actually order direct from us. We've got dealers, all of that. So you can definitely get Waterbox there. Um, and most of our giveaways, promotions, and stuff are actually going to cross over into there. 
so included in a lot of what we do already yep. and um, this is direct through us so definitely get over on your water box there okay yes. got another question from eric cintron hi i have a 40 gallon aquarium what light fixtures do you recommend um i mean all of our tanks here like the all-in-ones cube stuff like that we use the um aqua illumination primes We've got the fresh water and salt water variety yeah. depending on the width of it you'd go either a 12 or 18 inch arm they're fully adjustable and programmable um, through the app on your phone. Very easy to use. Yep. Going to be able to keep whatever corals you want. Um, pretty sure you guys use everything AI, Ecotech in yep. your store. All the way around. All the way around. Um, so those are really the best, and you can actually get those on our site. Go to your local store, ask for those. Um, but you'll see every tank here is run on AI or Ecotech, Ecotech lights. Lit. Yep. Okay, another question. <laughs> We're ready. This one from XX Malibu. Can a gen tang fit in the 105.4 or a white cheek tang? Um, gen I wouldn't. Tang would. yeah. yeah. Four foot tank. You know, if you're not going to put many other tangs in there, it could be your, it could very be your one favorite. Very open rock work. Yeah. Kind of like that we have now, very Kinda open. like the one here, yeah. Less swimming mean space. Um, the white want, cheek, probably not though. I'm going to stick with the tangs that are going to stay on the smaller side and a little bit less aggression. So like we opted not to go like a yellow tang yeah. in there. You know, definitely no blue hippos, no yeah. nasos, none of that. Um, as much as you might love Dory, yeah. don't do it in that size yeah. tank. You need a big, big tank for those. But yeah, some of your smaller or bristle tooth tanks are yeah. a great choice for that. Yeah, just stay away from like the larger acanthus tanks. Those are the ones that are going to need all the swimming space in yeah. a bigger tank. Achilles, brown cheeks, yeah. all those. Like, yeah, don't do that. Go with our Pro 220 and you will be good. <laughs> there you go. Get a six foot, yeah. This question is more for Joe. Um, are all worldwide corals aquacultural? Uh, we'd love to order some, I'm trying to focus on aquacultured stuff. Yeah, so primarily most of our livestock is going to be aquacultured, um, especially on the website. You know, all those frags are going to be grown from our farm that we did in a you know, couple videos back. Um, there's a couple things on there that aren't, but you know, there's some anemones that are still you know, wildly collected, but um, they're all, you know, mostly, I think it's 95 to 98% of the site is aquacultured corals in house. That's impressive. And we visited the farm. It's, it's, it's huge. freaking huge. Like, yeah. I mean, there's so much growing there. And if it comes in wild, get a couple generations so it's adapted. Yep. You know, then you're getting aquaculture corals. Like, there's just so much variety there. There's a lot, a lot yeah. of stuff. Like, you're keeping so much from having to be pulled from the oceans. That is really awesome. All right. We have another shirt we are going to do giveaway on YouTube this time. So are we ready? Another shirt. All right. Sam Turner on YouTube. Nice. Congratulations. We um, email support at waterboxaquariums.com. They will get with you on your shirt size and get you one sent out. Um, we love to give away stuff. So shirts, swag, we do all kinds of goodies here. Yep. And, um, you know, we're excited to just kind of be able to answer questions and have you on and stuff like that. Yeah. But we do have a segment. Ah, Keenan forgot about the segment. It's um, coming. <laughs> Just wait. Hang on. In a moment, we have a segment that we call Ask Jess. And um, we do this every week. So you can email to askjess at waterboxaquariums.com. And usually for our shows, we don't have a whole bunch of Q&A time. Yep. So this allows you to get some questions in. Let's start. All right, all right, all right, we got We're this. Back. Okay, so um, email askjess at waterboxaquariums.com. And what I cannot answer on the show every Wednesday, I will respond to personally um, back on email over the next couple days after. So shoot your questions, get your question on, questions on the um, show live. And Joe is going to read the questions all for right. us, Jess. You ready? Yes. Our first question is from Latoria. How do you prepare your water for your saltwater tank if you have a water softener installed in your home? Um, so you don't want to use water straight from a softener or any kind of home unit. You right. really want to use RODI water, which is not what your, your drinking machine is yep. going to be at your house. Um, reverse osmosis deionized is generally technically kind of too clean for human drinking regularly. Um, so you do want to install a separate unit that's going to be making the water just for your fish tank. So don't use tap, don't use softener. 
um, get the unit that's going to bring it down to basically just a water molecule. Yep. So you're not bringing in any nutrients or any of the bad stuff. You add the salt and you are starting with a clean base for yep. your salt water. It prevents a lot of algae outbreaks down the road. Yes. So don't skimp on where your water yep. comes from. Use it correctly from the start. It's going to save you a lot of effort. Yeah. Most of them are under 200 bucks, so it's it's well worth the investment. Yeah, especially if you have a bigger tank. Yeah. So. All right, the next question comes from Alex. So he has a question about Aquascape. How sturdy should the rock be? He's trying to Aquascape out his 20-gallon cube, and he's having difficulty making everything sit firmly in the appealing position. Okay, so you want to, if you're scaping it, it needs to be pretty locked in place because you're going to have snails and hermit crabs yep. shuffling about. They're going to get wedged between two rocks. They don't know what they're doing. They're snails. Um, and, you know, you also have fish that burrow. So if you don't have it to where it's pretty stable, where you can set it and it's not falling on its own, or if you touch it, it falls, you really want to consider a different scape. But if you're in love with it, do like we did with the frag, and a lot of people do with their tanks, is use like a um, epoxy to hold it in place. Yeah. Because you're going to do it out of water, ideally. Put your shape in, the epoxy is going to dry, and it's going to hold it there, and it's not going to let it crash. Just don't go like where every single piece is connected, because if something falls or something dies, yeah. you'll never be able to get no, to it underneath. Out. So just do it in smart segments if you really need to epoxy it yeah. together. Use some of the reef cement. You know, the Nios one's pretty popular. Yeah, the e yeah that's what I used on that one. Yeah. Marco, the Nios. Um, and that's how I got that kind of arch towards yeah. the middle. But otherwise, it never would have yeah, worked that way. It so it's, sometimes it's worth definitely going through that extra effort. Yeah. And then the next one here is, hello, is from Dominic. Hey, Jess, I'm a very big fan, and I want to try salt water out because I never have. And I was really liking the 25-gallon Peninsula Mini. And he is, let's see. I don't know much about saltwater, but I really like the black ice clownfish. I was wondering if two of those would do fine in the 25-gallon. And if should be in, if anything could be in there with them as of other fish, and what kind of cleanup crew and corals should be in there with them. So in a 25-gallon tank, if you have a pair of clowns, I would say you don't have too many options besides maybe some lower lane uh, fish like gobies, yep. things that kind of stick around the bottom, um, especially with clowns as they become more mature and if they have an enemy, they're going to be very territorial yep. and they're going to defend the heck out of that area. So when a 25 gallon is a little bigger, they're going to take over a lot of that real yep. estate. Um, when they're juvenile, it won't be as big of an issue, but as they get bigger, it will. So, you know, consider bottom dwelling type of fish if you want to add some more. Give them an enemy. Um, and corals, it's really up to you on your lighting and yep. your care. But if you're going to have an anemone and clownfish, because the anemones can move, pick easy, yep. soft type corals just yep. to kind of fill it in. And let that beautiful pair of clowns and their anemone be like the showcase of yeah. the tank, which and would look really good. just be ready. Really Sometimes the anemones move, so, you know, They go wherever they want. You yeah. can't stop them. Yeah. If it's on top of your coral, yeah, it doesn't care. matter. Um, you know, that's why a lot of times I think soft corals and anemones work well. Yeah. Because they can handle, if the anemone is like walking over them or sits next to them for a day or two, yeah. they can recover. Before you catch it, yeah. Um, whereas if you have an anemone wander next to like your SPS bird's nest yeah. or chalice or something, Gone. It stings it, it will kill it within a matter of a yeah. day. Um, so, you know, do consider those factors into, you know, how you pick everything. But a pair of clown, a nice anemone, and some soft corals will look awesome yeah. in a Peninsula 25. So, that is our questions this Wraps week. It up. Email on in. And we get two short giveaways. We got to see our winner for the frag. Joe was awesome enough to come in here last minute yeah. and join us for our show today. Thanks for the invite. Answer some questions and some knowledges, as we say. Um, and next week we will be, I don't. Showing the tanks around the yes. office. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. The office tour. Wow. Um, so we're doing like an office tour of all the small tanks around, the, um, around our offices. Well, all of our employees have them on their desk. Kind of show the variety that we have from cube to um, peninsulas and stuff like that. So. It's going to be really cool to show all the different things you can do with the small aquarium. Yeah. So we're going to walk around the office, check all those out, and we'll see you next Wednesday. See you.